I'm awfully glad to meet you. My name is Tim, and I want to tell you about a wonderful adventure I had with Jump Jump the Elf. The elf was only three inches tall. Maybe you don't believe in elves, but you will when you've heard my story. Jump Jump and Mary Holiday who live in Holiday House. At Holiday House, every day is a holiday. Something like Christmas all the time. I know, because I've been to Holiday House, and I've seen Mary Holiday. She's awfully pretty. And I know Jump Jump, the little elf who jumps up and down, backwards and forwards and sideways, and who talks so funny and so fast that you can't understand him all the time. We saved Christmas, Jump Jump and I. We really did. And in just a minute, I'll tell you all about it. some of the other kids at the orphanage where I live. And we've been wondering whether Santa Claus would remember us. Really? He's a friend of mine. He's a little fellow, only four years old. Well, Billy said maybe Santa Claus only cared about whole families, but there are mothers and fathers and lots of brothers and sisters and all. Maybe he wouldn't bother to stop at an orphanage. Billy was worried. I was kind of worried, too. All of us kids were. So when I went to bed that night, I couldn't go to sleep. I kept looking out the window at the Big Dipper and the North Star, and I kept thinking, if I could just follow the North Star, I bet I'd get to the North Pole before long, and I'd find Santa Claus, and I'd just ask him if he planned to visit everybody at Christmas. Then I could tell Billy. So I got up, dressed myself, and went downstairs. and out the back door. Golly, it was dark, but I kept my eye on that North Star and started off into the woods. It seemed I walked for hours and hours, and then I started to get sleepy. I got so sleepy, I just had to rest. So, I took off my jacket, laid down, and covered myself with it. And then, just as I was getting comfortable, something tapped me on the knee. I thought maybe an acorn had fallen on my knee. But just then, something tapped me on my other knee. And then I heard the funniest noise. <laughs> You know what it was? Elf talk. Real elf talk. I sat up, rubbed my eyes, and then I rubbed my eyes again. Because right on my knee, jumping up and down like a little jumping bean, was a tiny little boy elf, not over three inches tall. And he was dressed in bright red pants, a candy-striped shirt, yellow shoes, and they had a pointed red cap. He never stopped jumping, and he didn't stop talking either, talking that funny elf talk of his. He was so funny that I laughed. And do you know what he did then? 
He laughed, too. <laughs> and he jumped back and forth from one knee to the other until I was dizzy from watching him. He kept talking, too. I couldn't understand a word he said, no matter how I tried. And so I said to him, I'm sorry, Elf, but I can't understand a word you're saying. And with that, he got quite red in the face till he looked like a cherry with arms and legs. And then he jumped onto my collar and started to tug at it, as if to pull me onto my feet. I stood up, and then he jumped right onto my right ear and gave it a pull. I started to walk to the right, which pleased him, for he laughed, and he sounded so jolly that I laughed too. <laughs> well, he guided me along, jumping from ear to ear, and as I walked along, he sang the gayest little song. <laughs> Before long, we came to a garden gate, and there stood a house just like a picture in a storybook. It had a peaked roof, diamond pane windows, and a bright red door. The elf tugged my ear, so I unlatched the garden gate. And we went up the garden path to the door. He tried to get me to open the door, but when I wouldn't, he jumped onto the door knocker and swung back and forth on it. <laughs> then we heard someone calling it to us from behind the door. Jump, jump. Oh, jump, jump. Is that you? All right. All right, all right. Just a second. I'll open the door. Well, I wanted to run then, but the elf grabbed my ear so hard that instead I said, Ouch! Standing in the open door was a very pretty young lady with golden hair, and she was smiling down at us. Well, there you are, Jump Jump. Oh, and you've brought a new friend. Hello. Won't you both come in? I'm Mary Holiday. And that little elf jumped right to Mary Holiday's shoulder. And we all went in. The inside of the house was wonderful. There were heart-shaped picture frames on all the walls with golden arrows through them. Over the mantel were tall green hats with shamrocks and clay pipes. On the sofa, there were red, white, and blue sofa pillows shaped like Fourth of July firecrackers. The table in the corner of the room was set for a birthday party. And as we walked in, an Easter bunny scampered out of the kitchen door with a basket of colored eggs. In a minute, it seemed like, I was sitting in front of the fire, and Jump Jump was lying on his stomach in the palm of Mary Holiday's hand, talking to her ten to the dozen. But to my surprise, she seemed to understand every word he'd said. But tell me, Jump Jump, who is this you've brought to Holiday House? My name is Tim. How do you do, Tim? I hope you'll pardon Jump Jump for not introducing us. Sometimes he quite forgets his manners. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but he's so small and so busy jumping up and down. And besides, he talks much too fast to make proper introductions. Tim, his name is Tim, Mary Holiday. <laughs> I his know. His name is Tim. He talks so I can understand him. Well, of course, he can talk slowly if he tries, but he forgets. And he talks fast when he's excited. It would be much better if he talked slowly all the time. Tim, Jump Jump and I are very happy to welcome you to Holiday House. Thank you, Mary Holiday. Give my friend Tim some pie, Mary Holiday. Give him some pie. Jump Jump thinks you might like a piece of pie, would you, Tim, with a glass of milk? Thank you. It would be very nice. Oh, you want some pie, too, hmm? Please. You're welcome. Jump Jump sat on the table and had his pie on a penny. I had to laugh, for he jumped about so much that I had my pie eaten long before he'd finished his tiny little piece. Mary Holiday didn't eat any pie at all. She kept looking out the window and glancing at the telephone, as if she were waiting for someone. Every time she looked at me, she smiled, but still... I thought maybe I should thank her for my pie and milk and go on my way. But just as I started to, what do you think? 
I looked over at Jump Jump, who had just finished off the last crumb, and he was sound asleep. Mary Holiday picked him up, just so carefully, and said, Oh, what a tired little elf. <laughs> well, while I put him in his bed, you must tell me all about yourself, Tim. I live in an orphanage, Mary Holiday. You do? Yes, and Billy, a friend of mine, who's only four years old, he's worried. Worried? Yes, ma'am. He thinks maybe Santa Claus won't come to see us at all. Oh, oh, I see. So I thought, Mary Holiday, if I followed the North Star, maybe I'd find Santa Claus, and then I'd ask him, and then I could tell Billy not to worry anymore. Oh, oh, yes. You know, Tim, I'm worried, too. Are you afraid Santa Claus won't come to see you at Holiday House? Yes, because... Well, well, maybe, maybe, jump, jump. Oh, that's uh, that's the door knocker, Tim. Maybe that's a message from Santa Claus now. Greetings, greetings, Mary Holiday. Oh, it's you, Archie Pogley the Clown. Come in, Archie Pogley, come in. <laughs> <laughs> I came to wish you, Mary Holiday, a Merry Holiday. Oh, it is a holiday, isn't it? Oh, yes, of course, it's a holiday. You didn't happen to bring a message from the North Pole? At this hour? Or what hour is it? It is an hour, isn't it? Oh, yes, it? yes, of course. It's a late hour. Well, you haven't heard from Santa Claus at this late hour? No. No, I haven't. And I'm so worried, Archie Pogley. This has never happened before. Well, oh, excuse me, Tim. This is Archie Pogley, the circus clown. I'm a jolly old clown, and I never do frown. And I make little children laugh with glee. I never do whine, because I haven't got time. I'm a jolly old clown, as you can see. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> and what a funny clown he was. Dressed in green pants, a yellow shirt, and a red hat with a feather in it. And his hair, his hair was bright pink. I'm afraid I stared at his pink hair, for he said... <laughs> As a famous man once said, Pleased to meet you. You like my pink hair? Well, yes, I do. Well, as you can see, I'm feeling in the pink today. Oh, Archie Pogley, you are silly. For I'm a jolly old clown, I never do frown. I make little... Oh, but you're frowning, Mary Holiday. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Archie Pogley. Well, it's just that I, I'm so concerned about Santa Claus. And then Mary Holiday told Archie Pogley about me and the other children at the orphanage being worried about Christmas, too. I wanted to stay awake and hear what Archie Pogley might suggest about our going to the North Pole. But I was getting sleepier and sleepier again. I tried to stay awake, but... <sighs> Suddenly I was asleep, right in my chair. However, the next day I was to find out why Mary Holiday was so worried. And it had to do with my trip to the North Pole, too. Tomorrow, if you'll meet me here at this same time, I'll tell you what happened next morning when I woke up. Uh -huh.